Hey everyone, this is Kelly with Shootproof, and today's webinar is all about SEO basics, um, steps to optimize your photography website. We are so lucky today to have Kara Eccleston here with us. She is the Shootproof guru of SEO, and this is probably one of our most Hi, requested uh, topics. Thank you so much for taking the time today uh, and joining me as I nerd out on some SEO. Um, but before diving in, let me quickly introduce myself. Um, my name is uh, Kara Eccleston, uh, and I'm the SEO manager here at Shootproof, and I'm uh, located in Dallas. Uh, I've been doing SEO for about nine years now. Um, before joining Shootproof, I worked uh, agency side for brands like um, Hotels.com, Carter's, ASOS, and Lily Holzer. Um, this is my first webinar, so uh, apologies in advance for any hiccups um, that might occur along the way, uh, or if uh, one of my cats decides to uh, make an appearance, um, which is very likely to happen. Um, today, we're just gonna be covering the basics uh, on how to approach your SEO strategy as a photographer. Um, so we'll go over uh, what is SEO and why is it important. We'll go over local SEO, uh, keyword research and targeting, um, and then if we have time, uh, we can dive into SEO uh, tools as well. So what is SEO and why is it important? Um, SEO stands for search engine optimization. Um, and it's the process of trying to obtain free organic traffic by improving your website's position on search result pages when people search for your product or service on search engines uh, like Google and Bing. Um, Although search engines differ from one another, they uh, are all built on the three same fundamental principles, um, which are crawling, indexing, and ranking. So first, um, programs called web crawlers or bots uh, follow links on existing web pages to discover uh, new pages on the internet. Um, and then those bots will also routinely keep crawling those page pages to make sure um, that they still exist um, and to check for any updates or um, see if the content has been, been refreshed. Um, once those bots crawl the pages, they then make a copy of the page uh, and store it in a database called an index. Um, in order for your website or page to show up in the search results, um, it has to be indexed. Um, and then the third step, which uh, is ranking. So search engines will use algorithms to pick the best results for a search query. Um, and then it will create a list of those pages. Uh, and that's what appears on your search results page. Um, Google uses more than 200 ranking signals um, to evaluate content. So they look at things like uh, relevancy, quality, um, page usability. Um, Although Google shares some of the, what some of those ranking signals are, uh, a lot of them are kept under lock and key. Um, so they're very secretive about how their algorithms work. Um, so really as an SEO, uh, my job is trying to reverse engineer um, that algorithm. Um, and that's kind of just done by um, testing and then seeing what works and what doesn't. Um, so why is SEO important for you as a photographer? Um, SEO uh, is important because the majority of online traffic is driven by search engines. Um, not only do the organic search results take up more real estate um, than say paid ads, um, but people are more likely to click on organic results than on a paid advertisement. Um, and if you do SEO correctly, you can continue um, uh, it will continue to pay out dividends over time, unlike um, paid marketing campaigns that once you shut those off, you're going to start, uh, you're going to stop um, getting traffic to your site. And you may be wondering, well, what about pay-per-click advertising uh, or PPC? Um, and PPC is a great way to attract customers fast, uh, whereas your SEO efforts are, are going to take some time to pay off. Um, however, the downside to PPC is that it can be um, really expensive, um, especially if you're a new business um, just starting out. Um, so, for example, if you've been on the keyword uh, photographers in Atlanta, um, it could cost you around $7 every time someone clicks on your ad. Um, and if only one out of every 10 people who actually click through to your site are reaching out um, to inquire about your services, you can see how that cost can add up over time. 
Um, but if you do have the budget um, and you're, you are kind of waiting for your um, SEO to take off, um, it is a great channel to kind of supplement uh, your, your online marketing strategy. Um, so SEO can be very daunting. So I just want to break it down to five really um, easy to digest steps. Um, so the first step is you're going to want to research keywords around each of um, the services or shoot types that you offer. Um, next, you're going to build a unique landing page for each of your um, individual service offerings. Um, then to kind of help support those uh, service pages, you want to create blog posts that are topically related to each of your services um, and then include links back to that service uh, landing page. Um, then you're going to want to build trust and authority around your brand with off-site SEO. So that includes things like building backlinks, um, setting up social media profiles, um, setting up a Google business profile, um, and just having a, a presence outside of just your, your um, website. Uh, and then lastly, um, SEO isn't uh, just a one and done thing. So you want to keep monitoring your performance and then test and refine things as needed to see what works. Um, it's also important to note that SEO has come a long way and is constantly changing. Um, so some tactics that worked uh, five or 10 years ago are ineffective today. Um, so here are some of the things that you should stop doing and what you should start doing instead. So first, uh, stop keyword stuffing your pages um, and instead start creating really descriptive and informative pages that are going to be valuable to your website visitors. Um, you really don't need to use your target keyword, you know, five plus times throughout your, your page anymore. Um, Google has become so sophisticated. They're really good at understanding um, semantics and the context around your page. Um, but, you know, you can include those, you can still include those keywords, but kind of just keep it to your page title, maybe your H1 heading, a uh, few times in your body copy, but um, there's no need to get like crazy with how many times you feature that keyword. Um, I know there's a popular tool called Yoast that a lot of you may use, and it will kind of, you know, flag you red if you haven't used the keyword enough times, but um, it's really kind of an outdated uh, way of looking at SEO. Um, secondly, uh, stop creating location-specific landing page pages for each city in your service area. Um, and by that, I mean uh, those pages are essentially, they're all the same exact page that are duplicated. And the only thing that is changed is that you swap out the city name. Um, that used to be a very common tactic um, maybe eight or so years ago. Um, but now Google sees that as just spam. Um, and so instead, um, start crafting um, a really good contact page that you know, includes all your business information, and that's where you can list all your service areas. Um, and then in addition to that, you want to start creating more localized content that, um, tar that your target audience is going to find relevant. So for example, if you're a wedding photographer in Dallas, um, you might write a blog post about the best wedding venues in Dallas. Um, so uh, or you might write a post about um, the best place to take blue bonnet photos in Texas. So try to think about how can, you can give like a, a more regional or local spin to some of your content um, to kind of signal that, that local relevance to Google. Um, and then lastly, stop using uh, multiple images with large file sizes on landing pages you want to rank. And instead, start prioritizing your page load speed. Um, that's a that's a very important ranking factor right now. Is how fast your page um, loads, um, and so you can um, use images that uh, are resized and compressed, um, and look into using like modern web formats um, like uh, WebP. Um, a common thing I've noticed a lot of photographers will do will have um, very large portfolio galleries with. Uh, a ton of images. Um, instead, I would recommend maybe only doing a sample of those and then linking to another gallery. Uh, but we'll we'll kind of dive into that uh, a little later. All right. Uh, so before we even jump into website optimization, uh, let's talk about local SEO. 
Um, so local SEO is a branch of SEO that focuses on getting your business to appear in the local search results or keywords that are important for your business. Um, so it's those three listings that show up um, below the map. Uh, we call this the map pack. Um, for, for businesses that have a, a physical location or um, that serve a geographic area, uh, most of their online traffic is going to come from the local results. Um, so as a photographer, I would probably estimate probably 85 to 90% of your traffic is going to come from there. Um, so it's, this is a very key area um, you're going to want to focus on. So if you haven't already, um, claim your business and get it verified. Uh, on, uh, so set up your Google business profile. Um, Sometimes uh, if you haven't set one up, you might still have a profile because sometimes Google will, um, maybe they'll crawl Yelp and see your business there and then create a profile for you. Um, so if that does happen, just search for your business name. And if you see that profile pop up on the right-hand side, there should be a little link that says claim this business and then it'll walk you through the steps. Um, once you have uh, your business claimed, um, you will also probably have to verify it and they'll usually just send a postcard with a, a code on it um, to a to the business address that you put in um, that you'll then go enter in um, uh, on the website to get it verified. Um, then you're going to personalize your profile um, by adding photos and uh, important details about your business. Um, and then you're going to want to actively manage your profile. So you want to share updates, uh, respond to reviews, um, and try to connect with customers through uh, Google My Business. Um, Google really likes when you utilize all their features. Um, and then lastly, optimize your website to include information um, that is present on your um, business profile. Um, this helps Google verify uh, the accuracy of the info you submitted. Um, and sometimes if they don't match up, Google will override uh, the information that you've uh, submitted in your profile uh, if they see it differently uh, on your website or, or other um, listings. Um, the biggest tip that I can give you is to fill out as much information on your business profile as possible, um, if it's applicable. So, you know, include your name, um, include your business category. Um, it gives you the option to do a primary and secondary uh, category. Um, list your uh, uh, service areas um, for hours. If you don't have a physical, um, like, studio location, um, put the hours that... Um, customers would, uh, would reach out to you um, during. Um, if you use some kind of booking tool, you can even include a, an appointment link so people can book directly from your profile. Um, add photos like your logo, add a cover photo, um, any videos if you have them. Uh, if you do have a studio, include interior shots. Um, Google also gives you the option to add um, products and services um, that you sell or offer. So in the products area, um, if you offer any kind of like print products or uh, photo packages, mini sessions, um, you can add those there. Um, and you have the option to even include the pricing. And then you can also link to the page that offers that um, product or service. And then you can also group these um, based on different product categories. Um, and then lastly, add all the different types of uh, photography that you offer under the service tab. Um, all right, so you've filled out your business profile, and now you're going to want to start building local citations. Uh, local citations are a very important element for local SEO, and those help establish credibility with Google. Um, and um, those are essentially just online mentions of your, um, what we call um, business NAP, uh, which stands for name, address, place. So just basic business info. Um, so things like a business directory, such as super pages or yellow pages, um, review sites like Yelp, um, social platforms like Facebook and Instagram. Um, all of those are considered uh, local citations. Um, and then when you build these citations, you want to make sure that your business info is consistent across each platform, um, especially with the name. So if you're um, on your Google business profile, if your business name is ABC Photography, uh, make sure that 
your Facebook business page also is ABC Photography and not say like ABC Photography Studio. So keep everything as consistent as possible. All right. uh, next, uh, in order to establish trust around your brand, you're going to want to uh, try to acquire um, Google reviews. Um, but don't don't be shady. Um, don't buy fake reviews um, or use like a kiosk system. Um, and by that, I mean, um, like, for example, when I bought my car a few years ago, uh, the dealership had a, a computer set up just for customers to leave um, good Google reviews for them. Um, Google can see that all those reviews are coming from the same IP address. Um, so they're likely to flag those reviews as spam um, and you can get your profile uh, taken down or, or suppressed in the search results. Um, but instead, um, focus on strategies like offering a great customer experience. Um, customers who have their expectations exceeded um, are more likely to leave um, a glowing review. Um, you can send follow-up emails asking clients about their experience. Um, if it was pleasant, ask if they would mind leaving review. Um, you can also just ask them directly, um, maybe during like a, a shoot. Um, and then you can also use uh, your marketing materials and your website um, to request feedback. Um, it's also really important that you respond to both negative and positive reviews. Um, so think, and you can also kind of um, use that as an opportunity to kind of subtly uh, slide in some target keywords into your response. Um, so for example, you might uh, leave a, a response like, thank you for your kind review. It was my pleasure being your wedding photographer. Um, so you can, you can get kind of creative um, with how you approach that. Um, and then if you get a negative review, uh, respond uh, by asking like what you can do to remedy the situation. And if they're willing to update the review um, uh, once that situation is rectified. Um, it sends a good message to your customers that if, you, if they were to have a poor experience that you're willing to work things out with them. Uh, next, you're gonna wanna utilize Google Post. Um, Google Posts are like free advertising on your Google um, business profile. Um, and they offer four different post types. Um, you can do a business announcement, offer event, or a product update. Um, and Google Post supports up to, uh, I think, like 300 words, and you can do photos, videos, uh, GIFs. So you can also link uh, directly from your post to your website if you want to. Um, and so really, you should just approach Google Posts similar to how you would do any other um, social media posts. Um, so maybe um, announcing like a sale or an offer, um, any open um, slots you have, um, business updates, uh, blog posts, um, any events, things like that. Another feature you can utilize is Google's uh, Q&A um, to answer commonly uh, asked questions. Um, this feature allows both uh, users and the business owner to uh, ask or answer questions. Um, so try and think about what are your customers um, routinely asking you, uh, or if you have an FAQ page on your site, uh, bring in some of those questions onto your Google uh, profile and then submit your answers. Um, so uh, an example of some uh, questions you might submit and answer, uh, maybe what type of photography services do you offer? Uh, which again, another good area to incorporate some keywords. Um, what's your turnaround time? Um, do you shoot in studio or on location? Do you travel? How long do sessions last? Um, so things like that. So now that you have your business pro uh, profile set up, um, you're gonna wanna do research to find the right keywords to get your site in front of the right uh, customers. Um, when doing keyword research, uh, approach it by thinking about the topics that relate to the services or products that your business offers. Um, so at the top of this like topic hierarchy are gonna be what we're gonna call like your head terms. Um, these are going to be the primary keywords you want to target, and they usually have the broadest reach because they are um, the most searched for. Um, however, these keywords are also going to be um, very competitive, and they might have lower conversion rates um, because they are so broad. Um, so you really want to also focus on uh, related keywords. So once you have those head terms established, 
think about um, the subtopics that might fall under those head terms. Um, these are going to be uh, like your long tail terms. Uh, so think about like different photography genres, um, different shoot types or trends, um, different styles, um, and think about like who would be searching for those services. Um, so for in um, this table, um, if your head term is like headshot photography, um, you might offer um, different types of headshots for models or actors or professional headshots versus group headshots. Um, so really think about like who your audience is and who's searching um, for your services. Um, these related terms, um, they're often gonna include like your, your head term plus like some kind of modifier. Um, and although these are gonna be searched less often, um, they're gonna be less competitive generally. Um, and they're probably gonna convert better because they're so narrowly targeted. Um, and in aggregate, these keywords on average uh, make up about 70% of your, uh, or make up about 70% of SEO traffic um, to a website. Um, so it's really important to focus on those kind of niche keyword categories. Um, um, there's no shortage of free and paid tools uh, to do keyword research. Um, and you, really, you don't even need like anything too fancy. You can get a lot of valuable information just by researching your competitors, either like direct local competitors, or you can look at photographers that are in maybe more competitive markets, um, like New York City or Los Angeles or Chicago. Um, you, know, you can kind of get an idea of the type of keywords they're target and see if those would uh, work for your business as well. Um, you can also get a lot of uh, good information about like search searchers behavior in their tent just by looking at um, the search result page. Um, so looking at things like um, auto the auto suggestions in the search bar. So if you type in your head term uh, before you press enter, just see what some of those um, suggestions Google, uh, Google offers because those are usually what are um, people are searching for the most. You can also look at related searches um, and then looking at the people also ask feature. Um, that's a great way to get a lot of content ideas for your blog. Um, and then lastly, just ask your clients. Um, make it a habit of asking them like, hey, how did you find, how did, how did you find out about me? Um, and if they say on, you know, just on Google, ask them what kind of things do they search for to, to really give you a good idea. All right, so we found the right keywords. Uh, now what? Um, so you're going to want to take those target keywords that you identified and you're going to want to use those to inform your website structure. Um, and those are going to be the pages uh, that you build and how you link to them. Uh, an organized website is very important for SEO. Uh, it helps Google understand what your site is about and what you're selling. Um, and so what you're going to do is you want to organize your content based on topics and themes using um, what's called a hub and spoke framework. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of show you what that uh, means in the, in the next slides. Um, so let's say you're a general, general photographer. Um, so first, uh, you're going to want to optimize your homepage for the term um, photographer in city or city photographer. Um, so an example on the left, uh, Dallas photographer, I'm going to use that in the heading. Um, and then you, you want your homepage to almost serve as like a summary uh, for your website by just kind of providing like high level overviews about your businesses and services. Um, because your homepage is going to be where most of your visitors land. So you want to be able to quickly um, give them an idea of like what your business is about and what you provide. Um, and make it easy for them to, to navigate to um, different pages. Um, next, uh, you're going to take those secondary terms that you identified, um, so those more niche keywords, and you're going to build service pages around each of those to target um, to target those keywords um, or keyword sets. So, like if they're similar, like really similar in meaning, meaning, then you can use the same page to target um, those similar keywords. Um, but try and create something that is um, like templated and, and like a consistent format because um, it's going to make it easy for you to, to scale that um, and uh, kind of build on um, to those service pages. Um, and these are going to be your, your hub pages. Um, so you're going to use these pages to link 
to some of your more topically related um, blog content. Um, and so moving on to the third step, your blog post, uh, you want to create content that aligns uh, with your services and that's going to be valuable for your clients. Um, so for example, um, if you offer wedding photography, um, you might think about um, blog posts like how do you post your wedding photos? What's the difference between candid and traditional wedding photography? Uh, wedding anniversary photo shoot ideas. So you can kind of take it a little bit uh, broader. Um, you can even try to get in front of your audience before they even start searching for a photographer. Um, so an example would be like creating a blog post about what are the best wedding venues in Dallas? Um, and then kind of tout um, your, your photography services there. Um, so, Again, really creating kind of um, localized content. Um, and this is going to be the spoke part of the framework. And you're going to want to link um, this content from your hub or service pages and then vice versa. So really just keeping everything uh, order uh, organized. Now, let's say you are a genre photographer. Um, you're going to still follow the same approach, um, but you're going to optimize the homepage for the genre that you specialize in. Um, so if you are a headshot photographer, uh, you might optimize your homepage for Dallas headshot photographer. Um, and then your service pages are gonna be kind of subtopics of, of headshots. So uh, modeling headshots in Dallas, actor headshots in Dallas, corporate headshots in Dallas. Um, and then you can kind of set up those service pages to include um, like a few examples from your portfolio um, include information about the service um, and pr uh, pricing, um, information about like what to expect. And then you can link to like helpful resources um, that are on your blog, like what should you wear, um, where to hire a makeup artist, things like that. All right, so you've done your research and you've optimized your content and site structure. Uh, now, what do you wanna work on? Um, so you're going to want to start building backlinks to your site. Um, backlinks are like votes. They signal to Google that your content is valuable and credible. Um, the founders of Google actually got this idea um, based on um, like when you're in school and you had to uh, write papers and cite your sources. Um, they kind of apply that same concept to backlinks. Um, however, do not buy backlinks. Um, you probably get a lot of uh, emails in your inbox of people trying to sell you SEO services or offer to um, um, sell you backlinks. They're usually very spammy um, and just a waste of money and they can even um, potentially hurt um, your rankings. Um, so definitely don't do that. Um, if you don't know what a backlink is, it's really, it's just a link from one website um, to another. So like in this screenshot, uh, this is an article about milk bath maternity photos in the Huffington Post, um, and they interviewed a photographer um, to get her thought, uh, her opinions, and then linked to her site. Um, so that would be um, a really good backlink to get. Um, but not all backlinks hold the same weight. Um, usually the more popular and credible um, or authoritative a website is, uh, the more valuable the backlink is. Um, so. But as a photographer, you're going to want to try and focus on getting uh, backlinks from like other local websites in your area, um, if possible. I mean, if you did get a backlink from something like Huffington Post or Forbes, I mean, that's great, but um, it's a lot of effort to get placed there. Um, so what are some strategies um, that you can use to, to try and get these backlinks? Um, really, it comes down to just outreach. Um, so finding other site owners who are willing to uh, link back to your site. Uh, a easy one is looking for sponsorships. Um, so look for local events happening um, in your area. Um, you can go to their website, see if they have a, a page for sponsors. Um, and if you see that they are providing links back to those businesses, reach out and uh, inquire about um, sponsoring uh, that event. Uh, you can also look at like community organi organizations or local clubs. Um, so maybe there's a photography club at your local community college that are looking for sponsors. Um, uh, 
educational institutions uh, hold a lot of weight in their backlinks. So that would be a, a, a really great backlink to get. Um, you can also find um, local directories or see if um, your local chamber of commerce, uh, commerce allows uh, directory submissions. So if I was a photographer in Irving, this would be a really easy win for me. Uh, I can go to my chamber of commerce website and they make it easy, really easy to reach out to them to get listed. Um, you can also partner with other business professionals. Um, so look for other professionals who can help promote your brand in exchange for either your, uh, uh, for your services. Um, so for example, maybe there's a professional resume writer and um, you either A, reach out to them and ask if you can post a blog on their behalf, on their site, um, talking about the importance of including a, a great headshot in your um, uh, resume or LinkedIn profile, um, and then in include that link uh, in that post that you submit to them. Um, this is called uh, guest blogging. Um, or you can even reach out and offer some kind of partnership. Um, say like, hey, um, I can offer an exclusive uh, discount to your, to your readers um, if you uh, link to me on your site. Um, so really just kind of get creative um, with um, kind of how you approach that. Uh, next, ask, just ask for attribution. Um, if you think that your photography is going to be published somewhere or has the potential to, uh, ask for proper attribution and a link back to your website. Um, so in these two examples, like you have um, this article from a cosmetic surgeon talking about microblading, um, and he includes his headshot with a link back to the photographer um, who took it. Um, you can even include this like in your contract saying, hey, you're allowed to use these photos in uh, online uh, with the exception that you link back to me. Um, so that could be a very easy win for you. Um, you can support a cause. Uh, you can find find one to support or, or create your own. Uh, journal, journalists usually love covering things like that um, and will often link um, to the person involved. Uh, lastly, you can um, contribute your work to Creative Commons. Uh, so platforms like uh, Flickr that provide their users with um, options of licensing their works through Creative Commons or um, stock uh, free stock photo websites. Um, one trick I read was uh, people will reverse image search uh, their photography and see if it uh, shows up on any uh, websites. And if it does, um, they'll reach out just to ask like, hey, do you mind just giving, um, giving me the attribution uh, for this photo and link back to me? Um, but really, it's just, you know, be creative. Um, if you only have 30 minutes uh, every few days to work on your SEO, just think about um, ways that you can promote your business just uh, off your website. Uh, but that that is the uh, gist of it. Um, and we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Thank you so much, Kara. I don't know about the rest of the, <laughs> the people here, but I was like taking notes and I am going to be working all weekend into the evenings, uh, <laughs> making sure that my website is optimized for SEO. So I am going to jump over to the questions tab here and kind of run through them and ask you so you don't have to sort of jump back and forth. So Sarah had a question about image sizing. Um, when you upload through a service like Squarespace, does it resize the images for you for loading speed or do you have to do that? Um, I'm not familiar specifically with Squarespace, um, but usually it's gonna upload the, the original size. Um, but there are a lot of plugins that you can use that will um, compress them for you. Um, and I think in WordPress, you can go in and, and actually resize it. Um, so you want to submit the size that is actually going to dis be displayed um, on the web page. So if the image is only going to take up like 400 by 200 pixels, um, you don't want to upload an image that's like 2000 by 1000 pixels, for example. So you want to size it down to what it's actually going to be displayed at. Perfect. 
So what if you accidentally create two Google profiles? Is there any way to merge them without losing reviews? Do you know if that's a possibility or are you stuck? Um, so if you're using the same business address, it's that usually shouldn't happen. Um, but um, yeah, you're definitely gonna wanna keep the one that has the most uh, reviews, um, but I can't remember exactly how um, you go about doing that. It's usually not very common, but um, you if you could permanently close uh, one um, or reach out to Google support uh, to get them merged. Perfect. Okay, Carrie had a question. Who can review our business websites to make sure uh, or to see how well we're doing with SEO? Are there any companies that are like legitimate that can kind of run through your site and see that it's working well uh, with your SEO? Or what do you recommend as far as that's concerned to audit your site? Yeah, so there are, there are a lot of free audit uh, auditing tools that you can use. So um, actually, I really like if you haven't connected your site to something called um, Google Search Console, um, go ahead and do that. It's very easy to set up. Um, and not only will it will not only will it tell you like the key, uh, keywords people are using um, to find your website. Um, it also has like a, a coverage report that will tell you if there are any um, like technical issues with your site or like if it's your pages aren't being indexed. Um, so that's a really good area to look um, if you have a little more technical savviness. Um, but a lot of what a lot of SEO companies are going to do, they're probably going to focus more on uh, like auditing the technical aspects. Um, and a lot of times they're going to give you things that really aren't that important just to make it seem like they found a lot of issues. Um, but one really good resource that you can try is Reddit. Um, so a lot of people will go to like the SEO um, subreddit and um, ask people to review their their website. And so you can get feedback that way. Um, you know, with, and there's usually not, you know, strings attached. So people are giving honest opinions. Um, but just keep in mind, you're probably gonna get a bunch of different uh, opinions because there is really no 100% exact way to do SEO. Um, but yeah, I would try try Reddit if you don't want to like go the paid route of hiring someone. That's great. Thanks. Um, Kai asked, what is YP? It was on one of the pages where you mentioned various social media sites. Uh, yellow pages. Yeah. Oh, yellow pages. Yeah. Perfect. Um, Crystal asked, how should we list our addresses on Google if we have more than one studio address? So if you have more than one like physical location, you're going to want to set up a profile for each of those locations. Um, yeah, so use your business address, set up those uh, each of those locations, and then where it gives you the option to uh, include your website, um, create like on your website have uh, like a kind of like a contact page for each um, uh, each studio, um, and then link to that studio's um, contact page. Awesome. Um, so Stephanie was asking, how do you typically ask for reviews? Uh, do you direct them to Yelp or Facebook? Is there one that's maybe higher priority than the other? What would you recommend on that? I would say higher priority would probably be Google, um, just because they are biased and want you to use their <laughs> services. Um, but I mean, really, if you can, if someone's like, hey, I'll leave a review on Yelp for you or Facebook, like take it, like whatever you can get, take them. But yeah, if you had to prioritize one, I would say Google. Yeah. And something I'd add to that is when asking for reviews, send them a direct link to where mm -hmm. they can write it. Make it so easy for them. Ask them directly, like, thank you, or please uh, write a review. It would help me out so much. I really appreciate it. And then send a direct link. Usually clients, if they had a great experience, will do that for you. So that's been really helpful. Yeah. Um, one tactic, and one tactic uh, I've, I've seen people use, well, like in their emails, um, they'll have, they'll have like, um, did you have a good experience? And they'll have like a yes button and a no button. So if they click yes, it'll send them, it'll prompt like, hey, do you mind leaving a Google review and then send them a link um, to the profile? Um, and then if they click no, it'll prompt them to reach out directly to the, the business owner to ask like, oh, you know, what went wrong and how can I fix this? That is a great idea. Okay. So Chantal said she has three different locations in different states. Um, she made two Google pages, but she's still not getting calls for the two cities. Um, if she were to make a third Google business page, um, 
would that help or like what are some ways to really try to drive traffic through those different Google pages? Um, so just, um, again, fill out as much as you can, um, make sure it's connected to your website and then actively, um, engage, uh, with the profile. Um, so start, maybe try using like Google posts, um, using those Q and a, um, uh, getting reviews, stuff like that. Okay. So this is a good one. How do we compete with big third party marketplaces like Snapper and others that spend a ton of money on SEO, right? Like we are just photographers in our houses, you know, trying our best, uh, but we might not have the budget to kind of really dive deep. Yeah. So that's why uh, local, the local SEO is going to be so important where you show up in those, um, in the, in the map listings. Um, because yeah, those, those large, uh, websites like Snapper are going to show up in what we call like the traditional search result pages. Uh, so the listings right under the map, um, yeah, it's going to be hard to compete with them, especially for like broader terms, like photographers in Chicago or something. Um, but that's also why it's really important to really go after those more niche terms, like, um, like a milk bath photo, maternity photo shoot in, you know, Dallas or something, because they're likely not going to. Um, if you think about it, they're they're making pages for like every single city, so they can't get that granular. Um, I mean, they might, but you're, you're going to have better luck competing up, uh, with them on those um, less search for terms. Yeah, that's a really good tip. OK, so how do you use SEO if you don't have a home base? Danny sounds like she's kind of traveling all over the place. Um, she's only kind of staying in one city for a little bit. Uh, so what do you do in that case? Hmm. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a that's a stumper right there. Um, hmm. Probably you're just, you're you're gonna want to really focus on like building a following. So you maybe using like social media uh, might be a better approach to really gain um, like word of mouth. Um, using uh, events perhaps. So like things like um, like Eventbrite. Um, to like kind of like if you're gonna like hey I'm hosting this uh, mini session in um, Las Vegas like create an event for that so that, that could be a way um, to get exposure. Um, okay, yeah, that's that's a tricky one. I have to think on that one. <laughs> All right, Beth, Beth asks, are blog posts crucial? I know a lot of us are, are photographers, but we're not necessarily writers, so are they critical? Um, they, they definitely do help support like your, your core, um, landing pages, like your service pages. Um, however, I, I would say like, don't blog just to blog. Um, I think that's a, a, a lot of, a lot of people tend to think like I have to do 10 blog posts a month or something. Like I have to do some arbitrary number. Um, just like, if you can think of just like really good, valuable content, like go ahead and put that out. But don't get so caught up in like, oh, I have to do so many and they, or they have to be so many, um, you know, words. Um, you can also kind of use your blog to showcase more of your portfolio. So like every time you do different shoot types, maybe just make a post, like show some examples of the, the photos um, and then like talk about um, the, the session. And that's another way you can kind of try and, and incorporate um, some more keywords. So Mindy, and it looks like Crystal has the same question. Is there um, certain websites or website hosts that work better than others for SEO? So like WordPress over Squarespace? Uh, I would say probably WordPress um, would be my, my top. It's really, it's really easy to use, but it's also very customizable. Yeah. Um, I know for a while Wix got a lot of slack for not being SEO friendly, but I think they've since like they've gotten so much feedback yeah. about how terrible it is for SEO that they fixed that. Up your game. <laughs> oh, yeah, I All see right. That. So WordPress it is. Um, what is WebP? That's a good question. Yeah, it's um, so there's a lot of uh, more modern like image formats and they're just more compressed and load faster. Um, so I would just like research it and there's a ton of guides out there um, that kind of walk you through it. And there's also like plugins to that you can easily convert. Um, your images to be in that format. Cool. Um, so like if you use, like if you were uh, use WordPress, um, there's a plugin called Smush. That's, that's really good at compressing and uh, your images and 
um, selecting like different formats to use. Awesome. That's great information. Um, so what is the biggest SEO mistake that you see on websites? What are things that like might hinder your SEO performance? Um, not clearly describing your actual services. Um, I looked at like a ton of different like photography websites, just kind of get an idea. And I've noticed that people won't have service pages. Um, they'll just have like uh, portfolio drop down and it'll just show like, here's like our maternity photos or wedding photos. And it just takes you to a big photo gallery, but there's not a lot of text. Um, Google, Google can't really understand like your images. Um, so you really need to rely on like that text content to, to you know, to describe what it is. That right. you're Everybody better start writing. <laughs> okay, so Melissa said, um, how do we test our SEO? As you've mentioned, um, like how do you make sure that it's working? Um, so again, use like um, Google Search Console or Google Analytics um, to see uh, where people are landing on your site. Um, you can also like if you set up Google Analytics, you can get um, like behavioral metrics. Um, how people engage with your content is a very important SEO uh, ranking factor. Like Google can actually like track like how long people are on your pages um, or if they're landing and then like quickly bouncing back. Um, so like if you're seeing that your pages have really high bounce rate, that means you probably either maybe your page is really slow um, and it's not loading correctly, or maybe you just don't have the information they're looking for, um, or uh, maybe you're, you don't have very good navigation set up. Like maybe it's hard to navigate through the site because um, you're not using enough internal links. Um, so using those tools um, can kind of help to see how your performance is trending. Awesome. Okay, Gia said that um, she's using her husband's office address as her business address, and it's kind of mixing his stuff with her photography business. Is there any way to like separate that stuff? Or if you're using an address, that's kind of what shows up. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, is it a, if it's a if it's not like a physical location, like if you don't have a studio, um, you can just set like rely on that feature that um, where you just set the service area and it right. won't show the address. Okay. Let's see. So you can just to confirm, you can have two different like Google business sites. Pages. Yeah. If, if, the, if, if you have a physical location and it's in, has two different addresses. Service areas. Okay. It should be each for each individual location. You should have a separate Google profile. Okay. So Richard was asking what's WordPress versus WP engine. I don't even know what that is. Uh, I, yeah. Uh, so WordPress is more referring to like the CMS, um, like the content management system. Uh, WP engine, I believe is, uh, it's a service. Like a, uh, I think they do hosting and, um, something along those lines. It's a separate company. Um, okay. yeah, they special, I think like in hosting stuff like that or backing right. stuff that I'm not that familiar with. Okay. Richard also asked, um, what are the maximum number of plugins, uh, that you should use so your site, is, your site isn't like slowing down? Is there a sort of a limit? Uh, I wouldn't say like an exact number, but just like, if you're not using it, don't, don't have it installed. Um, and also make sure you keep them updated because that can cause like security vulnerabilities. So um, only only keep the plugins that you're actively using uh, and also read up and make sure that there's not going to be any like conflicts of, of mm -hmm. using um, different plugins. So sometimes they can uh, cause friction with each other. Right. And they start building up like those apps on your phone that you just never delete <laughs> and yep. then they cause more problems. All right. So what's the best file naming structure or metadata for pictures uh, for SEO? Do you use alt tags? I know alt tags are a thing. Yeah. So image alt tags, um, definitely fill those out. Um, it's, it's really, it's especially important for like accessibility. Um, and, but just don't keyword stuff them. That's kind of an, another like old tactic people used to do. Um, just be descriptive what it is. So, yeah. um, you know, if it's a family um, photo, just do uh, family photo shoot uh, taken in Dallas or at this location or something. So just be descriptive. Don't worry too much about getting like key, like exact keywords in there. Okay. So that follows Mindy's question. I think um, 
when you export your images, that's kind of, do you, do you sort of label them as you export them or, or just when you say you upload them to WordPress, you use the alt tag? Is, that, is there a difference? Uh, well, so when you're, um, when you're exporting, you make sure you, when you save uh, the file name, um, try and be descriptive as well. Like oh, don't have just, like a random string of like random letters. Numbers. And numbers. Uh, yeah, try to be descriptive uh, about oh. what it is. That is great. Okay. Um, is WebP better than JPEGs uh, for SEO or floating? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily better. I mean, it depends. Like, it, like if you don't compress the JPEG, then yeah, it's going to, it's going to take longer to load. Um, but, you know, it really depends on how big and uh, images you're hosting and like how, uh, the, the, the resolution. So like if you're, you're wanting to feature these really large um, high definition photos, um, probably go with uh, WebP. But if they're going to be like smaller, um, I wouldn't put like too much weight into trying to figure out which format you should use. Um, uh, use the, um, there's a tool called Google PageSpeed Insights. Um, so Put your web page in there and it will it can actually give you a lot of information about your images so it'll tell you if they're too large um, or like they think you can compress it uh, by this much um, so that's a really helpful tool as well and they'll, they'll give you recommendations okay and what if your website doesn't use alt tags is there a workaround for that or would you just label the file itself with like a descriptive uh phrase uh I mean, you should, I, don't know, I guess it depends on the platform you're using. It, there should be an option to add alt tags. Um, if not, you can you can if you have access to edit the HTML, um, you can you can add it in there. So just Google like alt image tag HTML, and it'll show you how. It's really easy, um, but it's not really that important of a ranking factor anymore. Um, it's more just um, for accessibility, really. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to take two more questions. Um, what is the best and most useful SEO plugin for WordPress you can think of? Ooh, that's a hard one because it really depends of like what your needs are. So, like, if you're if you're not very technical savvy, then um, you might want a plugin that's going to help you with that. So, like. For right. example, I'll, I'll use Yoast, not for the like keyword parts, um, but because it's, it makes it really easy to manage your uh, site maps. Yeah. Um, so like for me, that's a big time saver than having to worry about having to get like, connect with a developer to implement those. I can just use that plugin. So I, it kind of really just depends on like where your skill set is and what your needs are. Okay, last one. Scott is asking, will Shoeproof ever offer a landing page option or an all-in-one web solution? I don't know if we can really speak to this, but um, now in two weeks, maybe three weeks, um, we are actually releasing a new feature all on uh, a portfolio website. So what we've created uh, is essentially people can come to a portfolio website and see your work and you can actually add some text there, some contact information. So um, that is in the works and there is going to be a webinar all about that in a few weeks. You can actually uh, go to our events page at www.shootproof slash events um, and register for that. Karen will be walking us through the whole thing. So um, I wouldn't say it looks an overall web solution, but it, it's one step closer. So that might be helpful. Uh, all right. Yeah. And that's Yoast, right? How do you spell that? Y-O-A-S-T? Y-O-A-S-T. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we are at an hour. We don't want to keep everyone too long. Uh, as a reminder, you will get a recording of this entire presentation along with the slide deck as well, because we know it was a lot of information packed into an hour. Um, and uh, also you'll be getting a survey. So let us know if there's anything else you want to learn about. Kara, thank you so much. This was so informational, so condensed. I learned a ton. <laughs> So we definitely appreciate everything that you put together for us today. Yeah, of course. Hopefully I didn't bore anyone too much. So No, no, this was great. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. And make sure to head to shootproof.com slash events for our future webinars. They're really great.
Uh, so we'll see you then. All right. Thanks, Kara. Thanks, everyone.